Yeah, she does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it just keeps getting more interesting. Stuff. More day. Stuff's getting going then, huh?
and we thank you, Lord, and we ask that, that you raise up a body of godly men and women to preserve us, Heavenly Father. Lord God, in your hands, in your hands is the United States of America. Lord God, we ask that tonight, as we sit and, and, and make decisions, will you give us wisdom, Lord, and you give us peace and understanding, wisdom and compassion, that all, that all of our decisions and all of our, our words be peaceful, loving, knowledgeable. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Yes. yes. Questions for the treasurer? Treasury report? Robert, I hang on. Are we hang on? I guess I, I have a general question. You know, we look at uh, the amount of funds that could be available here. <coughs> Looks like uh, by the end of next fiscal year, 2018, is that the six floor we're looking at here? That's on the future years. I'm reading off of the report. It's a different <coughs> I was reading out the regular treasures before I didn't get the survey. So my question will come when you talk about the budget. <coughs> okay. You have your item 10. I hope so. Okay, very well. Any other questions or comments on the treasury report? Here? The insurance costs. Is that for liability as the office or just? That is the uh, general uh, liability insurance and property insurance that uh, we have to have in the through South Dakota public and we'll discuss that. Okay. So it's required that we go through South Dakota public? Uh, yeah. I was just saying today, right? That bill that came in. Wasn't that yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. It's the cheapest. Just about it. everybody in the state government <coughs> should set out for the state government. And it also covers uh, bonding the directors, too. So it covers that as well, which is why it was cheaper than a lot of the other places where the actually is that we have those certain funds process or certain insurance like state insurance? Um, no. <coughs> so we have $97,000 of customers who are remaining for projects this year. Is that, is that correct? Uh, we'll have to I'm looking at the bottom of the blue. Yeah. Yeah. Out of the budget, yes, that's been budgeted. We still have ninety-seven thousand dollars. Okay. Hey, not committed. Not committed. Potential project funds. Okay. Sure. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I have a question for the men's office. Mm -hmm. um, how is it uh, budgeted when we have it, like a two-year deal, like the sampling project we have? What is that? How's that handled in the budget? Where does that show? Do we approve all the money for that? In the <coughs> each yes. Year? And then we usually have a, we just have a notation in finer print that says it goes 15, 16, 17, or whatever. Again, again, that shows up in the budget. Just on the treasurer's report, it's just uh, on what you have obligated the project. Was the membership's amount changed when we declined the other membership last meeting? As far as? Under memberships and conferences? The $1,300 for the 2017 meeting? Uh, you guys are back on the budget stuff again. No, just on the treasury. Yeah. <laughs> Just doing the treasury report. For me, the finance sheet is the one we're looking at right now. So, you want to go through that? Okay. I've got a question here on the uh, H2E Incorporated DNA Sampling. H2E, is that the company that you two work for? Yes. <coughs> is that a conflict of interest in any way? I, I would be. You surely, you, you contracted as an engineer, you surely contracted two different contracts with the same company, didn't you? Yeah. 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 Thank you. 
it partly answers it. I, I was just saying that we have two contracts with the PhD, and they're separate contracts. And that, to me, does not constitute a conflict. The 3988 is to cover your cost for doing the sampling, right? Is that what that is? That part of it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, all right. we do is collect the samples. Right, yeah. That, that's well and beyond the yearly contract we have with you. Yeah. Right. Because it's a different contract. It's a different contract, yeah. Separate contract. Separate contract. Yeah. Oh. That's good to me. Yeah. 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 The lab works through uh, source molecular, but we ship it to them and handle all the data.
town, not this subject, in our bylaws, we're required to have an office for public business. We're required to have that. And even if nobody can run it. And we still has to be there, and we still have to have the office. Well, we could ask the question, too, do we need more time? Do we need more hours? It been, would have been in our agreement that we approved last month or last meeting to dictate the hour change. But it could have been considered the uh, fee was reduced by $10,000, so an hour is the same as it had been this last cycle. So consideration. Yeah, I could try to stay there all day Tuesday, Thursday, even without the office hours. I just work on H2E stuff. So if you can come in outside that on there. One nice thing about sometimes park parking may be an issue, but you've got street parking on either side. The door is open if you can't park in front of the building you get on in back. Yeah, there's bill. a whole lot behind street, it. There's one extra parking bill if we want to have a meeting down there, for instance. So conference room is a big enough for this, but it's big enough for small groups. The common area is big enough for this. Um, it's kind of hard because they don't have a projector, so we have to you know, borrow have one. The common we did have one down in last year. We went into the motion to approve up. Have we ever received any complaints about not being open or have we had, had any comment? No. no. Okay. If people usually come down, they usually will look at the office centers on the website or they'll call first. Bob, uh, 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 somebody had made it. No. Are you looking for a motion? It was then. Okay, motion to approve the rental for a year. I'll second. Second. Motion to second. Ten. Ten. To approve rental for four hundred dollars a month for the next twelve months. That's effective July one, August one. That's a big August. 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 July first. Okay. Any discussion on that? All those in favor? Aye. 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 There's an agent's commission, and then they do give back uh, credits for renewal and loss control and loss ratio and stuff. So we got $298 back in credits. So the total invoice is $2252.53. That's due to be paid by August 24th with my recollection. Yep. For invoice payment today. Actually, it came in uh, okay. June, and this says July 8th, but it, uh, the effective date is August 24th. Is that, is that what we paid last year too? Uh, last year, I think it was 20, just under 2200 And actually, I, and I was looking today, and it's always been around $2,000. But for some reason, the budget's always put in for 1800 I don't know, I don't know where that came from, how we missed it last time. But it's always been right at $2,000. So, and before 2015, I think, we finally they had, they had a bonding policy for the treasurer. And then we found out that this insurance actually covered that. So we could drop the bonding insurance, and I think that was this is also good for another year. Yeah. Starting. If you approve it, it's good for another year. It's effective if you said July 8th. Well, that's when they ask for the check. It's effective uh, 824 through 823 the next year. Our general budget funds held in an interest-bearing account. 
Say that again. Are our general funds budgeting held in an interest during the campaign? Yes. Is that related to the insurance? Is that right. Well, if the policy is not set to do until August 24th, can we pay in the first week of August? Our interest during the town pays five. Everything counts. Make a motion to we approve the insurance. I second that. Okay. Further discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Second vote on USGS Street Pole Gauging Stations Continuation Project. Dave, do you have anything else for us? Well, I know I sent some information. This is David Bender with the USGS. Um, I sent some information to MLA right after the last meeting on who funds what gauges. Um, and I do have a, just another copy of that if anybody doesn't have it. Um, any of the board members are going to have that. So um, I, I would like to stress that. Um, West Dakota fund helps fund the Castle Creek above Deerfield and Rhodes Fork above Rochford gauges and you are the sole additional per, um, entity that helps fund those two gauges and that is it. So, And we do I have copies of the, our agreements with other agents with, uh, with the sites around there too. So. I'd like to have one of your copies. It would be good to have it on papers too, just to hold it here for Thank you very much. Thank you. And I also include the Pennington County's um, information in there too. So and the city of Rapids, just to show the gauges in that area and who funds what. So, yeah. I didn't bring any extra for public. Second vote is $14,875 for uh, $780. Excuse me, $785. I get that Okay. $14,785. Information provided. Oh, okay. um, those two gauges that we're asking West Dakota to help fund are solely funded by the USGS and West Dakota. No other entities involved. There are other stream gauges down basin in both Rapid Creek and the Rapid Creek Basin that are funded by Pennington County Emergency Management, but there's also gauges funded by City of Rapid City. Um, the irrigation district um, and BLM, the game fish and parks, help fund certain gauges, partially fund gauges all the way through the, the basin. So it's just the two that are most upgrading are our headwater streams that we're asking you guys to help fund. Yes. Who owns the gauging station? Um, federal government, USGS operates 
pretty much installs and operates them. Um, you guys help support help support the operation of those gauges with the funding. If you own them, why don't you pay for everything associated with their their maintenance and operation? The tax base, the tax dollars that we get, we use part of those to help fund those gauges. If we had to solely fund them, we would be about a third of the gauges across the state that we would be able to fund with the, with the tax dollars that we receive. So we have local governments, um, local entities help support those gauges um, to meet the needs of the public. I'd just like to make a comment on that. that um, I worked for the federal government for many years, and this isn't meant to be a cut on you, but uh, the federal government spends money on things that are a priority for the federal government to spend money on, and it wastes a lot of money. And what I've seen is that when they need to find a way to pay for something, they can do that. And it usually involves removal of whatever unnecessary things. So um, I'm not going to support this for that reason because I think if, it's, if these are owned by the federal government, then you should be maintaining them. You should be operating them. And if USGS can't find a way to find the funds to do that, then maybe they should look at turning them over to the state. Yeah. 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 I know. Yeah. I believe in a previous meeting that was explained to us that the model of the USGS is different than any uh, federal agency. And that they are, um, it's part of their mission in order to save money, federal money, not waste it, to find local entities that are interested in what they're doing to partner with them in that. So if we're not interested in it, then heck no, don't give them any money. But if we care about that money or that, that water when we partner with them to do it. And the other thing is, you know, if we say the federal government should fund it, that's us anyway. I mean, it's our tax dollars. So whether it's local money or federal money, I don't see what, what the difference is. I mean, I, I'm not disagreeing with you that they don't waste money. But I think the USGS is, is a model of the way federal agencies should be run. They don't do things unless they can afford to do it. And they go out and find people to help do it. That may very well be, and, and I've heard this argument before, you know, that if it's, uh, you know, if it's spent by the federal government, it's all of our money, uh, whatever. It's all about budgets, okay? They have a budget, we have a budget. Okay? Their funds come from certain sources and our funds come from certain sources. So it's not the same pot of money. <coughs> but we're, we're talking about different uh, pots of money so, um, and they may very well be a good model, <clears throat> but another good model is uh, responsibility for the things that you uh, install. If you build something and install it, you shouldn't expect other people to come in and help you maintain it. You should maintain that. All right. I'd like to address part of that. Um, well. The USGS, when we install a stream gauge station, um, it's because there's a local entity or state or other entity that really wants that data at or near that site. So, you know, we partner with them to try to reduce our costs so we can have a broader network, too. So. Well, my response back yep. to that would be... <coughs> It sounds like you might be a middleman. Yeah. So maybe you shouldn't even be involved in it. So maybe they should be turned over to the state or county or whatever. So, and then maybe it would cost us less to maintain those. I don't know. David, I see you've got Benning County Emergency Management. You've got Rapid City, Rapid City. Right. Can you give us kind of a rundown of a list of other state or local? Uh, we have about a hundred different um, 
entities that we partner with to support the gauges across the state, um, including the state ENR, um, two parts there with water rights, and then um, uh, water resources. Yeah, and, uh, water rights, and I can't remember the other part on that. Water resources. Water resources, yes. And then um, <coughs> state DOT um, requests a lot of data, especially for our peak flow sites that we have across the state. Um, cities, counties, um, and in the local area, Custer County, Lawrence County, um, Pennington County, emergency management, um, the Bureau of Rec, because of the dams, they, they want information on what's being released um, on a regular basis. Um, and oh, City of Sioux Falls, City of Mitchell, um, the Corps of Engineers help support some of the front, some of the gauges along the Missouri River. So we, we partner with quite a few different entities across the state, plus tribal entities. So has the, has the data derived from these gauges benefited in design of roads and culvert sizes and ditches and all the things that come along with necessary containment? Yes, yes. In addition, not only that, but the water rights um, for the irrigators. Um, it, that's a critical one that the state DNR, the water rights program, monitors daily, especially now in this in, the, in our drought system that we're in right now. So, you know, the, it benefits many different entities. The dam tenders here for the city of Rapid monitor our, our sites daily. Um, they let us know if they see something funny that could happen. You know, we have a tree fall across the stream, we get back water. So the water rate, the water levels rise above that. So if we have a gauge up there, we'll see that. And, but it affects, if we have a, a higher stage, usually means an increased flow. But if it's a big jump, it, it kind of gives an indication that something happened within the system. Yeah, I mean, you, you asked it. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's, he's absolutely right. It's an important part of our, our water supply system in Pennsylvania County. Yeah, so that, that is, can be acquired in many different ways for a lot of the reasons. I just want to see if it's beneficial use to, to, to our society. Yes, and, and on, on that same note, at least with the USGS data, it's collected consistently across the board, um, where if you have a county, a city um, doing different monitoring, they might be overlapping. Um, so we, we're kind of that middleman where we get everybody to, to kind of agree where things should be monitored and work with the local entities to arrange where it's not duplicative effort on top of that. In my understanding, those gauges are placed within the waterways of the U.S. water. And I think only G GSA has the position to work within those waters, right? Um, Counties and states don't have the authority to go within those water areas and work, so it has to be by them. The states can, um, I, but I'm not sure on it fully, but the Corps of Engineers, we have to work with the Corps of Engineers quite a bit right. when we're installing gauges and especially in the waterways of the U.S.
to just kind of answer that is the USGS is federal and I'm sorry Joanne Noyes South Dakota DENR Geological Survey um, the state does work with a lot of these the data that comes off these gauges water rights water resources but a lot of these water rate waterways are cross boundaries of state boundaries whatever and so to be able to get consistent data we need to work with you know a lot a bigger area than than what you're suggesting we don't work on just a county basis or the state basis we have to look at water basins that cross state boundaries um, so USGS is giving us consistent data in the same format and it's all published online so it's it's available for everybody so it's it's a little bit broader information than what you can get with just individual entities in our situation we're talking about two gauging stations right? yeah are they contained within the state of South Dakota yes they are but again Water isn't. The water basin of those two drains into Rapid Creek Basin, to the Cheyenne Creek Basin, to the Missouri River, which crosses state boundary down to Nebraska and across, you know, down to the Gulf of Mexico. So it's kind of a stretch. I mean, by that we could say, well, you know, Mexico and South America could potentially be involved, so maybe this should be a UN thing. Well, the world's getting smaller. We had a couple public comments. Is everybody pretty much done? The, the bill for West Dakota is like 14,000. 14, 26. Uh, you name? I'm George Fairby, district on county commissioner. That's where these gauges are, by the way, in my district. But I hot off the press. Uh, in 2016, we made four payments to USGS, Pennington County, $40,600. We're on track for the same payments this year. I didn't get a chance to go look at the minutes to see which projects we funded. But rest assured, next year's funding uh, will be a lot harder to get. As I said at this last meeting, I think we're being double dipped. I think we're paying for road, Roch, I mean, uh, Rhodes Fork and Castle Creek. I've been in the Rhodes Fork. I've seen that gauging station. I can't imagine what the hell we're doing there. Collecting data, for purposes of collecting data, is just that, collecting data. If we don't have a use for it, what are we doing? We're just spinning our wheels. USGS, well, and we talk about a model. The model of the federal government is road cost sharing. Just absolutely horrible. For all the road, federal road <coughs> projects that come and say, hey, Pennington County or whatever county, how about doing these? <coughs> we'll give you all this money, but you've got to match it with 18.05%. No, I don't have a decency to say 20%. 18.05%. We've done a few of those projects. That's a lot of money to us. 18% of, of some big numbers is a big number. This I've always been opposed to. It's just a joke, absolute joke. In the hills, it can downpour. Three, it was two, two years ago, three years ago, Hill City got flooded out, basically. The roads were closed. I live seven, eight miles straight as a crow flies, straight west, it got about 10 drops. Where the hell was the gauge for Spring Creek? The, the, this, this whole thing's a joke. Mm -hmm. Well, we say we spent we spent forty thousand of, of everybody here's Painting County. We spent forty thousand bucks. We're on track on track to spend forty thousand again this year. Writing checks to the federal government. Painting County writing checks to the federal government for what? So they can have some more employment. Thank you. Okay. What is the actual cost of the gauge, and how much is labor for? The operation cost to fully fund one of these gauges, like at Rhodes Fork, is about a little over fifteen thousand um, dollars to operate. That that's to collect the stream, 
the continuous data at the site year round um, to work that data, to check it, review it, make sure it's okay, compare it to the actual measurement um, because we do have a bubbler in there that measures the gauge height, the water depth, and we, then we can develop our rating curve associated with that um, based upon our measurements and the data that's actually collected out there. So we have a, a points to hit across the year and then that takes time and energy to go up there and do those measurements, work the data up, approve it, and get it published on, on the web. Um, and that, that supports labor, travel, um, staff time, and all that. And breakdown for staff is probably in that 10,000 range for that gauge every year for operation. And you play hell getting there those four from the wintertime. We would have no data. Um, we would lose the input. The spring flow input into the system um, is what we're collecting at that point, at those two sites. It's not peak flow. It's the basic flow that's coming into the system, into Rapid Creek, into the Rapid Creek range, well, Castle Creek, and then Rhodes Fork is two of the main spring flows into the Rapid Creek Basin. So, which feeds the Castle Creek gauge above is what's feeding into Deerfield Reservoir, which affects the irrigators and the city of Rapid that has the majority of the water rights on, the, on those reservoirs. The Rapid Creek, um, the spring flow from Rhodes Fork is the, it's kind of that base flow that's coming into the system um, from the Rapid Creek side. So we'd lose that, so we wouldn't have those, that input, know that input into the system for, so the Bureau Rec can plan for releases and that. Um, the irrigators would, know, would not know exactly what they have for irrigation purposes. Um, the City of Rapid wouldn't know exactly what they have for the water rights that are available within the, within the reservoirs. Dave, I've got a question. Yes. This is about a sick home. You weren't finished. Just one more question. Okay. If I could, so if we're, if we're West Dakota Water Development, do we, and I, I think I'm going to pull this out too. Well, I'm just going to ask in general. As West Dakota Water Development District, do we need that data? If, do we, do we really think that the government, without any control from us, or any input from us, that the government could, federal government could do better <coughs> without us? We'd probably end up shutting down those gauges. We'd lose that data, lose that long-term <coughs> impact on the system. I mean, we wouldn't know exactly what was coming in. We'd end up closing them down because we don't have the funds to support them year round. But there would be other people that do the same thing, that we could get it from them, like we could get it from the second party or something? If the state or the county wanted to go in or the city wanted to go in and provide that information, you could probably get it from them. But DENR doesn't but have the budget either to do that. DENR? We're overstretched already. So is it about money or is it about data? Both. Both. Can we balance that out? You have. <laughs> we have. Um, federal government. This isn't 100% just money. 
No. There is there is something that we get in return for that money that's important or not. Yeah, oh, the data is important to many entities in the city, the irrigators, the water rights. Um, you know, without knowing what's there and within the system, you know, development cannot take place. It gets to a point where are you damaging the water resources by further development in an area or not? Nathan and Dan, and then we got to follow up to Jeanette's questions. So just, I mean, you're throwing out hypotheticals. Uh, you know, if we pull the funds and you're trying to answer these questions. There, if we do drop it, we should know what we're going to end for. Yeah, but. Uh, the hypothetical is what you're asking for. You're asking for us to drop this money and, not give it to, and let the government take over. Yeah, that's not how this kept. That, that's, that's what I'm addressing his right now. Is it worth is hypothetical it? Also, um, I work again. I work for the federal government. I I had experiences. There was one in particular that was particularly telling about how things work. Okay, we had early outs and buyouts that came ripping through our contracting office when I was stationed in Oklahoma City years ago. We were told basically the sky was going to fall. Everything was going to collapse. They lost 75% of their staff over the course of the weekend. And so there we were, left trying to do all this contracting work with 25% of the people remaining. Guess what happened? The sky didn't fall. Service improved service got better. And you know why service got better? Because they weren't so fat. They had to actually start managing things the way that private sector people manage their operations every day by asking that basic question, how can I do things better? And they did that. <clears throat> so not only did the sky not fall, but things improved. We did better. So <clears throat> the, the answer that you're getting is a hypothetical answer. And it's, with all due respect, you don't know. Now, my, my question is, if that did happen, if you did pull the plug on these gauging stations, would you turn them over to the state? If the state wanted to take them over, they could take them over. Um, so to me, that seems like a better scenario. If we need the data, then why is the federal government involved? We should have those stations. The state of South Dakota should be doing this work. If we need the data, then that's the way it should go down. <clears throat> I don't see anything in the Constitution that says that the federal government is supposed to be monitoring stream flows anywhere in the country. Or, or it doesn't even address that, really. It doesn't. I, I, I understand. I am just trying to understand what's going on. I appreciate your input. I, I'm just trying to figure out where we're going with this. Yeah, I'm going well, uh, I think most of you know I've kind of involved with, with the net water management in Benning County for quite a few years with, with the city of Rapid City. And we use that data, especially as David say at this time of year, because every drop of water needs to be accounted for. This to be in our folk water like folks who are watching over our shoulder. Uh, there's, there's a lot of water users in Pennington County that depend on that data the day to day when, when they're distributing water to the different water users, mm -hmm. including the downstream of irrigators, the city of Rapid City, uh, the Bureau of Reclamation is involved with these things. So it, it's a it's a, a cooperative effort between uh, several government agencies. And uh, that you know, I don't and the reason we established those sites up there was was to help better manage the, the water coming uh, through the system. And so uh, the city was involved with the DENR folks were involved with the Bureau of Reclamation, Corps of Engineers, USGS, in establishing those sites. And that data it is valuable. Um, and, you know, they, I'm not sure why they use the cooperative program, but that's the way it's been. And I'm sure it's, it's money. Because DENR doesn't have enough money to support the program. The city of Rapid City doesn't have kind of the money to support. Uh, the number of gauges, all these gauges in the system, so there's a cooperative effort between a lot of government agencies. And I, I think we need to support this, continue to support these two gauges. About 7% of our annual income is what I see it coming out as at this annual yeah. dip. I was going to recognize George and come back to James. No, the Rapid Creek water 
based on a watershed covers part of Lawrence County as well and uh, I guess my question for USGS is let me back up a little bit I, and I think one of the forks of Rapid Creek is probably very obviously precipitation but I'd say the, the, once the, the largest forks is probably out of Lawrence County because they get more rain more precipitation how much does Lawrence County kick into do they have a gauge on, on that fork of Rapid Creek? Not on that gauge of Rapid Creek, but they do support more on the um, Spearfish Creek in that area. But so the Rapid Creek in, in Orange County is not measured? No, no. And Rhodes and Fork is the only one up in that upper basin. Once again, my, I, my eyeballs say that that's the biggest fork of Rapid Creek. So, so wouldn't you want to measure the biggest, biggest cow in the herd? If, if you're worried about all the, the cows getting in the trailer, wouldn't you want to worry about the biggest one first? You know, you, 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 this, is, this is crazy, absolutely crazy. You ride along Rapid Creek and it's moving right along. So it'll vary from day to day, from year to year, obviously. But, but what's Lawrence County doing? They help support gauges on, on the on northern. Rapid Creek. On Rapid, 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 Rapid Creek. Creek. They don't help support the gauges on Rapid Creek. The, the other creeks don't flow into into Yankee County. Thanks. Yeah. I was trying to determine how the billing was done because I noticed some of the different partners you work with, they charge different rates. We're paying approximately 56%. And I'm looking at the last page you provided with us. And whoever that customer is, they're paying up to two thirds. Um, and it's still for like uh, are you looking at uh, the Castle Creek below Deerfield Dam? Or I, I did both of them, but we're paying 56%. That's one of the first and second pages. Dave, first and second pages. Oh, the first and second pages? Yeah, that's that's our portion. The yes, that 6,000 um, is the 6,700 is what the USGS pays for the road support. And you guys are paying um, $8,450 for the, to help support that gauge, um, for that continuous gauge. And if we look at, uh, I'm gonna go for last the last page on, um, that's the Castle Creek below Deerfield Dam, where you've got four entities helping cover that cost. Each one, uh, Rapid Valley Conservation Districts provides about 19% of that funding. Um, the South Dakota Game Fish and Parks provides 19%. City of Rapid City covers about 38%, and Bureau of Rec covers about 25% of the cost. And then the USGS covers the rest of that cost through the property program. Well, I was just going to say, Barry Muxon, Clean Water Alliance, DRA. <clears throat> I was going to say, if you want the state or another entity to take this project over, maybe you should go up here and ask for legislation to get done to fund it. It's not going to happen. DNR does not have the money. Nobody else has the money. So it's not going to get done unless somebody funds it. So if you want to change the funding, you have to go out and get the work done. Fine, I don't, well, I'm just, that's, well, I'm just,
75. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Roll call. Um, Moss? Nay. Um, Yes. Mueller? Nay. Jovic? Nay. Akers? Yes. Williams? Nay. Second? Aye. Violetta? Nay. Durlo? Aye. Motion fails 5-4. Budget proposals. We'll start. Uh, do you have Leon or Emily? Do you have anything laying there in your hand, or do we go direct by director? So. Uh, we'll just start at one and go on through. Anybody that has something? Mm -hmm. If there's anything, if you have a paper copy. Williams, you are you are no right. Uh, you, if you just go online and ask if, if they want funding for the grant 
for a, uh, a loan. Just fill out the paperwork, submit it to you, and bring it to the board. Uh, you'll probably have a spokesman from your group or the person who is requesting the funding and have them present themselves here. Okay. That's simple. All right, I yeah. I wouldn't have said it happened to the director.
The only things to be on the budget next year are these four items right here. And if they have not submitted a payment for these items, or finished paying for those, but the contract is still good, they will be listed under here, but there'll be a note that there are 17 contracts to be left. But the money for those is already allocated up here. So that balance, that $612,000, is what you have to budget against. So this is, I guess, where I wanted to talk about property tax relief. We got so uh, much money uh, that we're looking at here. Can we uh, start thinking about reducing taxes? And, uh, I mean, it doesn't sound like we've got any significant projects on the uh, on the burner here. We debated that last meeting, and we proceeded to go for 100% tax levy. That cycle comes back around you not until next year. So that would be a year from now or a year from May. Yeah. 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 I have a question. All right, Bob. Can the state then come back and withdraw any of these funds? Or no. They, they, so once we've done the, the uh, we've collected it, then we have complete control over that. Yes. It can't be given back. Okay. Can we suffer any other negative impacts by having a surplus? About a hundred thousand feet would be a little bit pissed off. Yeah. Angry? Okay. Did you mean angry? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Would they be angry about? Uh, I'm collecting six hundred dollars and aren't spending it and collecting more. Yeah. I guess, you know, to say that there's no significant projects coming down the pipe has to do with uh, attitude and philosophy of people sitting on this board. I think we've had some significant projects that we've chosen not to support. I mean, talking about tax relief, I don't know if you've looked at your report or your property tax, but I think I pay $8 for the West Florida Water Development District on my tax. Um, we're, we're just collecting a very small amount of money. And our job as a board essentially is to give that money away. And we've got our purse strings as tight as we can get them, and we think we're saving taxpayers money, and we're not. Because as we just found out, we already took the money from them, and we're supposed to be used for water development and water resources. But for some reason, we don't want to do that. So I don't know why some of us are here. For tax relief, for what? I just don't understand what we're doing. You know, and maybe the comments directed toward me. I don't no, know. You, you're not talking about anything. Yeah. I, I disagree. And I disagree with your statement that our job is to give the money away. Our job is to be good stewards of these public funds. Agree. It's not just to give the money away. Agree. And we shouldn't be collecting money if we don't have a use for that money. I don't so, understand why we don't have a use for streaming. I don't understand that. That's absolutely ridiculous. I, I never said we didn't have a use for a stream We just turned it down. Um, you misconstrued the comments that I made and I tried no, to I make it no, 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 no. No, we understood what you were saying. That was yeah. okay. Well, yeah, well, well the order, please, the order. Or yeah. Yeah. We've got, uh, we've got some difference of opinion here. We're, we're done with that item. And, um, yeah, let's so move on. That has been voted on and I, different philosophies in the air. So we have a bad attitude on the record saying I called the question 10 minutes prior and you let the conversation go on. So I just want to know what we Yeah. I, I agree with the council that we've, we've had to we've had this we voted down to funding this USGS water review system, which I, I tell you something. I, I could fill the room with, with people that, that have an interest in that, that we're supposed to be represented. You know, where there's nine of us, but there's 100,000 people that depend on that, that, that data. And we just turned it down. And uh, 
you know, maybe they can go back to the city or somebody else and, and pick that up. But it needs to be picked when up. We're and uh, we're and just, uh, we turned down uh, Jerry, Jerry Rice's request, which I think is good information. It's based on, on uh, what our mission is as a board. <coughs> and we're not, we're not funding these projects. And they're, there's good information that can come from these projects. So I'm, I'm just it's, uh, kind of lost at what we're supposed to be doing. Well, let's take my item by item. And, and if they're they stand on their merits and, and the board feels enthusiastic about spending money on for the benefit of our public good, and then that's, that's what it's going on. What our responsibility is is with the function of Pennington County, statutory body, and all the other government agencies that we're working with and talking to and coordinating with. Um, is it a proper size supply? Is it you know, what, what's the best use? So uh, sometimes change. Of course, it's another step or another decision. So, um, what it was, what it was. So, on our budget, what else do we need to see? You know, I don't know. Robert, um, in front of us, this is considered our first reading, and then we look at it in August for the second the passage. And take it on this year, yeah. Take it on to the state. This is, this is what will be posted in the paper. question in regard to this youth and science uh, grant. Is that a 2018 project? I thought that was requested some time ago. It was, but it's an ongoing funding. We're funding that annually? That's what they like. They requested it again. It was this past spring, it was girls and science, I believe, focused more. but. We requested from the discussion that we had um, prior to this disbursement was generally in youth, and not, not to say girls are important too, but it was something that I think became youth in science. Well, they, I, I was there during that discussion, and I'm probably the one that you know, raised the issue, but they were touting themselves as youth, but it was girls and science. There, there was no inclination to involve boys at all for whatever reason. So <clears throat> how do you know that going forward it isn't going to be the same agenda? We're going to be excluding boys from the you know, science program that they put on. I would, I would suggest that we make a formal request to the board of representatives of that group. This is a budget item before they have funding I'd like to agree with Jeffrey Gilbert, but I don't recall that being uh, an ongoing item. I've always got a request for a long time. I was going to pay two or three times. No, but I skipped it. They, they haven't come to us and asked us to put it in the 2018 budget. Right? No, that's true, but usually it's like three P projects. Oh, like yeah, kind of it's okay. budgeted, but it's not approved, you know? They still have to come and get two votes. Right. Right. Joanne got out in front of it this year, so that's why she's just what she did. And that's what you think. Yeah. No. No, 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 no. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, can I remind the Just board, Just we are, please. Dan Richard, citizen. Can I remind the board that this is a budget? This is not spending. You know, when the spending comes up, that's the time to argue with something. Thank you, Dan. Any other comments or clarifications on the budget as it's presented? Is that a proper motion at this point in time until we have a public hearing? Uh, no. Sorry. Deny your motion. It's not. It's not approval meeting. It's a presentation, and it will be posted for our August meeting for our hearing, public hearing to be uh, sorted out and approved at that point. Maybe. Yes. The rephrase or comment on some of Mr. Richard's comments. When you read through the codified law. 
this is intended to justify why you're asking for the bill that is you're asking. So it really would look better if you had some numbers in there. But if you're not going to vote, if you're not going to fund anything, like, and that's where you know, the taxpayers upset. <coughs> that we under budgeted an item last year, year before for eighteen thousand insurance. Yeah, 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 insurance. Yeah,
things, really. We had some good discussions tonight. And good discussions are always good on the board. But I, I, I would caution, and, and it's not always so easy when we have good discussions, but I would caution to ever take anything personal. Because we should never, this is a board, and we need to be able to discuss things and not take it as like somebody's personally added to you. And we should never give that impression to you. That, that we have to not ever think that if somebody disagrees with us, that it's personal. It's usually bit off hurt because it's not personal. It, it's just trying to get answers. And, I think, and sometimes these good discussions might turn off that way sometimes. But starts at the coffee pot. You shouldn't believe all the garbage is passed around here from somebody that says they were out of meeting and here was this and this happened and somebody stealing money and all that kind of stuff. You know, if you want to be a politician, uh, you're in the wrong area. But, uh, you know, try to tell the truth. Uh, don't start rumors. And uh, that's, I've been being hit with a lot of rumors lately. And, uh, there's nothing to them, 99% of the yeah, I would like to say that my focus on this board is getting me on. I know our government spends money all over the country is wrong, but I have not signed one check that goes outside of Kennington County. Everything we do, if we write a check, it, it, it involves Kennington County. I can't control what the government's done up in Missouri or what they've done in some other place. We just have to worry about Kennington County and what we do in this county. And we can't control what the government does outside of this, our, our hand. We might not like it, but we have no control over it. We're just trying to focus on stuff that we have control over in Pennington County that we can't control with the money. And we know where it goes. It's not spent frivolously. We know where every dime is spent. So just try to do that and not worry about the rest of the government. Amen. Okay. Thank you all. Items from admin. That ought to change. There was section one. You all had a chance to see the highlighted change. Just continually review it. These uh, articles and, and bylaws and stuff that you guys go along and make things come up in meetings and, and situations and stuff and uh, things that you do. And uh, so this one was uh, based on the wording that right now it says one meeting designated in December to approve payment of bills. Well, uh, as far as I know, you've never really done that. Uh, when I go way back in the minutes, you used to approve bills at the end of each meeting. Now you know the December's meeting is just a regular meeting. Uh, it was scheduled the second month of second two of the months, January through December. Place and time to be specified. Well, when I really thought about that, I thought you never really planned 
January for the next year, which is when your elections are. You never schedule that, really, until after it's already happened. When you're approved. So your, uh, your sequence ought to be from March through December and January of the next year. And then you know what your sequences are going to be, what your dates are, and then that January meeting will be designated as the annual meeting that you're required to have. And that's for election officers and uh, most of this office in your uh, in that. So that's the major change. Change of work. You have to post these for 30 days. They've been posted now, but uh, if you uh, vote to approve these as written, but then you have to vote to approve them at August meeting before they publish. It's an actual change. If you want to change something, now it's time to do it. But then we probably have to go until October because you can't post them for 30 days. Well, I have a question about uh, in the original it says September, November, December, and the uh, this one it's uh, it says July, October, December, January. Um, right, and that was another another thing that was wrong. Not the only time you've ever had a September meeting is an emergency meeting where you didn't okay. get the budget figured out in time because the budget has to be sent to peer by the middle of September. So we're substituting the uh, October for that September one, and then yes. the November is moved completely out, or is it, uh, are we still gonna have? You're missing the August meeting. So the first line is one meeting designated in August for the public budget hearing. So instead of September, it's in August so that we can get the budget to appear on time, which okay. is due in September. So, so it's moving So the same number yeah, six regular just, meetings and one meeting for the budget, which is August. Yeah. And is that going to be, we'll be meeting yes. this August, correct? Yeah, it's a special meeting for the budget. In the package you got this with the then system is this. Six regular meetings are every other month, five and eight. Thank you. We need a motion on that. We need to vote those amendments, don't we? we well, the amendment to Article 4, we'd love to vote on that. Yeah. Is, Is that, that all the amendments there are to this? To the bylaws. Bylaws. To the bylaws. Okay. I, I need approval. We need approval as as, as shown. Okay. Second. Motion. Second in discussion. Um, there were uh, there was an additional set of uh, additional language that was inside of the location and the codified law. Is that part of this? That's a policy change, okay. not a bylaw change. So that's right. going to be the next. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ken Moss. Second. Yeah. Yeah. Any, other, any other discussion? So down. So those in favor of approving this bylaw change say aye. 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 Opposed? Here we go. All the three changes Bob was alluded to. Didn't have himself a little bit. Yeah, sorry. That's all right. Again, I made a comment of putting that, inserting that one phrase, and I think that's a wise thing to do. So. And I, I did insert it, and everyone has a copy of it that they insert in there. So, you see current policies, a paragraph, suggest amendment is a series of what, uh, four paragraphs, five paragraphs. So, that's the review that we're on right now. Policy number three. Oh, certainly, please. Yeah, Leon, if you want to do this up. Okay, again. This is the existing policy three that uh, pulled a little bit out of an original policy. <coughs> now, <coughs> the 
original policy uh, started back in 1984 read like this. And that's the second half of that paper. It also includes all of these procedures for special assessment areas, uh, in-term financing, loaning money, given grants, and public assistance. And special projects. Now, back in 2014, board adopted policies, a set of policies, 25 of them. This was not among the policies. I don't know why it wasn't in there. I don't know where it went. But the way the vote was taken, to me, I would say that this whole area was left out. Now, I did at that time, you guys were still uh, trying to do the uh, wastewater treatment grants. And there were some other funding issues that you were talking about. So I wrote the policy 29 for financing that's in the existing policies that was passed uh, last year in July. But when I'm going back and rereading this, uh, especially the general policy about why and uh, what the West Hill Water Development District should be believing in and doing, and how to uh, help distribute funds and help people out and help different uh, situations out, the quality of water and your uh, water distribution and all of that, I thought that you should probably revisit this and get it cleaned up and uh, put back in to your regular policies. So now that, uh, what you have in front of you is, is putting this general policy statement in, in, in policy three. But uh, really thinking about it, what really should happen is maybe a subcommittee or something should be looking at this whole thing and coming up with the new updated version of it and uh, putting that back in the policy, putting it, putting it in the policy where it We still do sanitation grants, correct, for septic systems? You can, yes, we have. Uh, right now, in 29, there's not really anything in there about loaning money. It's pretty much grants and only for some engineering and stuff. Well, this is a uh, water district, uh, subdivision district or something. You could loan them money to help them out. Like the I see you uh, in the uh, Hidden Valley. And, uh, Island Meadows and all of those, uh, you could loan them money to help them out to get things going. Man, did you, did you prepare this? Which part? The suggested amendment. Yes, but, I, but what I'm saying now is I really think rather than just taking my amendment and, and I don't know what exactly you're reading, but Ken Steichen Offered. I had it added in there. Oh, added, okay. So that should be Ken's, with his comment. This is Ken's here. Did you do this, Ken? The one that Emily handed out. Just the second half of the first yeah. paragraph. Yeah, that's added. in your board packet. He just added. Yeah, just the same. Same. Oh, it just it's added a language. language. Oh, okay. You're right. Yeah, so Dan's pretty sure had a hand up a long time ago. Dan? Okay. Yeah, uh, Dan Richard, citizen. Uh, I was on this committee that uh, tried to clean up these guidelines and it was decided that 
all this would be removed from the policies in 14, I think. When you were on the board, Was it then 14 or something? That's when the. And the general policy statement went down. The general policy statement was taken out on a two to one vote, and there was five on the committee, but two never showed up. So it was a two to one vote to remove the general policy, and then a unanimous vote to move all these loans and financing and all that because we decided we weren't a bank. So we <coughs> decided we were going to grant the money or or uh, not disperse it. Board would wish and we get to appoint three, the three board members and, and Leon to sit down and look at this and vote. Yeah, 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 maybe. Maybe. No, uh, probably straight for a moment. <laughs> it could still, it, it, it's been hashed out, but there's a question yet. And I don't know if we, I don't know if minutes were taken during that. The administrator was there. I don't know if it was taken or not. Yeah. Um, I think Leon has done some great work. I, um, you know, since they, they've gotten involved, he sat down and read through all these policies and found inconsistencies and things like that. And, and that's just a great service that he's done uh, for us. Uh, and the suggestions here are good, but I think it would be wise to have a subcommittee just kind of sit down and hash that out and okay. make sure we all feel good about it uh, rather than just take a vote right now. I mean, I'd be willing to go with what we've got, but if other people feel like they want to have in there, then they got to be appropriate. I don't think there's any danger waiting no, to purify this a little bit. No, I think, I think we should have a subcommittee. And for the man of work, we should be, yes, many. I agree with the Jeanette. At this point, may I make a motion that we have that we put together a subcommittee? I will make the motion that we set up the subcommittee to four or three or four and just look it over and so we all feel more comfortable and we can maybe explain it to some of the other people if they have a question. Let's make it a short committee or I mean a short thing. <laughs> Put a time limit on it maybe? Motion to do policy three or is uh, it for the whole this whole vote on this yeah us. the whole change here. Oh, Let's just look at all over the whole policy. Policy three. Yeah, yeah. Policy three. Yeah. I'm just trying to be specific. Right. Right. Yeah, policy three. three. Yeah. Policy three. Okay. So motion for subcommittee so of three or four. That's by how that it's three board members and a and a minimum with along with division. Try to do it by the next meeting. Prior notice. Yeah. Okay, so and those two, and how do you get the numbers? Motion. Well, let's get the motion and the second out and discuss it. Okay. I'll second it. Okay, so motion second. Now we got a discussion. Motion of three members plus Leon to review this policy prior to the August meeting. This is the motion on the floor. Discussion, please. How are you going So what's the process? What's the process that you would recommend for getting three members? Three interested members of a can we volunteer? Do we volunteer do we part right now? Can we do it now? We go do it. We're gonna have to. Do you want to appoint? Do you want to appoint? Do you want to appoint? If we express interest during the discussion period, if somebody wants to jump in and be a part of this committee, subcommittee, I welcome open invitation at this point. Oh, and if I don't get three, get three hands in the air, we'll, we'll start pointing. Got so, mine. Got mine. And Robert, Jeanette, and Leon. And Leon, and who would you want to four plus Leon? Except I don't really have a vote. No, the board never says not three boards. We can't have a beat or four. It's got to be less than five. Right? I've got to be less than five. You go four with Leon. Okay. Just amend the motion if you want to use it three or four. I mean, not right. What's your four included? Three or four board members. You can't go with five. I guess four board members. So, 
amendment to the board board member request for one. Can that you second that? Yes, I second that. Yeah. You know, where we have done uh, policy changes this year was although you put three or four members on the board to make up the policy or the bylaw, everybody in the whole board has input to that. Let them go through their well, bylaws that they have, and if they have any suggested changes, and send it into the board or to the committee. Sure. Therefore, it sure helps them out sure. and gives them ideas of uh, routes to drive. Every director has input, absolutely. The right. subcommittee will do the work. We can be for our next meeting. I'll just come back with a <laughs> recommendation. Right. But would it be possible maybe Dan to come and explain the whole thing too? We can bring other people in to testify, or not testify, but put their input in. Maybe consider to do an expert witness or not? I'll go in. Well, Mike, then why not? Yeah, if, we, if we have questions, you'd like to, because you're familiar with what happened before, so. Here we go. Yeah. yeah. It's the resources available for no charge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's free. Yeah. Free so, yeah. As long as the BA all in the church is like more. <laughs> yeah. Is that where the Nutcrackers board's at? Well, yeah. I think that handles policy thing. James 3. Once a week. We're ready to vote. They got a space open. Uh, well, there's a motion. Is that ready to vote? Yes, I am. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just. Okay. I was really after a cookie. I don't know. <laughs> Well, I'll vote, but I'm getting my turn. Oh, it's time. Maybe we're near the end of the year. That might be your policy. Okay, those in favor of the motion, that's up to me. Leon, plan of policy three, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. A couple quick more things. We're almost done here, unless the public ties us down. But tentative meeting schedule. You have that in front of you? Or is that a meeting? No, it's just two. We just added in January. Okay, I'm sorry, that's right. Adding January to our tentative meeting schedule meets up with the bylaw change we just made. So that becomes a list of meetings for this bylaw. I'll move the green and white Second. Yeah, Dan, Dan and James, motion second to approval of the tentative meeting schedule. Any discussion on that? Excuse me, it was more to uh, if you've seen the, well, if you see the previous one I had the meetings were designated for different things that weren't being done. So really this whole amendment was to get what's actually happening or programmed for the next meetings this is the, uh, in line with what was really happening plus then because you did change the other bylaws, or it looks like it can be added to Tuesday before 2018. So it shows a cycle of our year, which would repeat again unless the modification came up. Motion second, and the discussion on that. We get uh, January. 2017 listed as well as January 2018. Is that the presentation that we want? The new one that will come out next January when you vote on the following year will be for March. All this is is an amendment of the existing one you uh, approved last January. So we just added the bottom one and changed the format. And then next January, you'll approve the next two yes. schedule from March to January 2019. Yeah. I guess the basis is my question was Mike's comment that this would roll over and be basically the same format. So next year, then you said it would be March through January. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for the clarification. Any other comments, suggestions, public? Anybody? Those in favor of this new meeting schedule, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. And you have a document that talks about our water use permit. 
Questions asked about the water permit we have for 10,000 acre feet. So I uh, wrote an email to Engineer Eric Grunner, DENR, asking him for his explanation of this is how he explains it. Second half of it is codified laws that give you the rights to do some of this stuff. So basically, if you'd like to build like a typical fire hose derrick into the stream, that's what I've seen pumped in and pumped out before. They have an iron or PVC pipe that starts at the road and is excavated down into the stream, we can build that and, in theory, sell water or distribute water if you need help. This water comes from Hawaii, so you'd have to, I guess you could put a piece of PVC pipe in Hawaii and something like in there, but I couldn't find it. No, Mike, I'm sorry. I'm sure there are pump stations are set up with Yes. The other thing you need to do, I mean, right, this this reserve, this water is based on the priority date the initial applied for it. But if you have to have a beneficial use and apply for a commitment to go to the water management board and have that applied. We water. have the, that's what we got approved in January. Yeah. We right. have the permit approved. Yes, but to use the water, to actually use the water. If we get an actual use yeah, for it, yes, if we, we have a need for a water, we have to apply to it, and that's correct. when you have to show the engineering and stuff. And the beneficial use and all that. Sure. So we would have to show that, it's like we're currently in draft, that it may be an entity at need and we want to put this in for future or immediate use. You have five years to put this in operation and use it. If you don't do that or complete it within five years, you lose it. When you say you lose it, you're, you're just, you mean we'd have to reapply? No. <clears throat> no, it's just lose for those five years. You have the water rights for five years for those 10,000 gallons, correct? Seven. Well, it's a future, it's a future use permit, meaning that the water is reserved for uh, a use, you know, if there's a use for the water, if somebody comes, you know, paying the county in our, in our district and wants, wants to get water from the Missouri River, we, we would be the applicant for the water and we'd have to uh, work with whoever we wanted the water to determine how much water they need and we'd have to put in, in an application through the water management in order to get approval to, to take water out of our future use permit for that particular amount. amount yeah. So it's, there's a process. This just basically reserves the water for something like that. But this is based on a time period. So once we use, if we use, let's say we use up all that water in that five, seven year period, the next five, seven year period, we get that water period. Yeah, no. you, you still have to reapply it. Right, we reapply and pay the water right mm -hmm. So who are you addressing that question to, sir? Sorry. You had asked the question who did you address the question to? And I wasn't able, your voice is low, I'm sorry, I think it's a little bit Normally it's not loud. <laughs> <laughs> it was a clarification to Leon's statement. Well, wait a minute, what did you say? Yeah, I was, I was suggesting that if we use this water and put in this, confirming that, in that five to seven year period, but well, when we get our next permit, we can still use that amount of water again in the next five to seven years. Can't do that. You have reserve 10,000 acre feet a year. A year, so we can actually use that. Well, if you get a use for it, and you sell, like West River Water Board has sold 1,500 acre feet of their 10,000. So whoever they sold that to has that right to draw 1,500 acre feet every year until they abandon it or whatever, whatever. As long as I got that right, permit these. So can you get that time? Like you, huh? 
it can't be a one-time year's payment. It has to be granted for an annual basis. It is granted for an annual basis. There is no one-time use permit. But if we sold, like, say, Pennington County and we did that water, and they say, this is how much we need for this year. Well, there isn't a year deal. They have to come up with a plan that they need to do. It would have to be bad enough that they want it. If the fact told them to go dry and they'd say, we need to supplement our water, and it's going to take 2,000 acre feet a year to keep all of our systems going, and they could put in for that and pipe it out here and use it. But you wouldn't get it just for one year, just to water somebody's crops for one year. Yeah. I just want to make a comment that um, since uh, people were getting upset that we're not going to be funding anything or whatever, whatever language was used, this is something that I would view as a very high priority thing for Pennington County or for this part of the, the state. If, and if somebody came forward with a project proposal to you know, look at how to get that water from Hawaii out here, where we could use it out here, I think that would be a great project. That would be a definite uh, winner, I think, for everybody. Uh, and there, there are other solutions, as I've mentioned before. Uh, I'm an engineer, I've done uh, water projects in the past um, that don't involve piping. <coughs> So we could potentially do a not for storage and recharge, for example, uh, type solution where we pump it to a certain point and start refilling an aquifer, where aquifer is plural, <coughs> that would feed this area. So I would love to see that. And that's just a comment to the public in general. <coughs> I think that would be a great project. What about for grass and forest fire use. Do they already have a permit to dip into that water? Uh, I'm sure there's some kind of emergency permit to use. But this water maybe this water is in here. Right. There is a lot of grass fires. Well that's sure the first half that permit wouldn't have anything to do with this one. Well um, this then could be used for a municipal project, similar to, uh, I know that Box Elder recently had several uh, wells not usable for a period of time. Yes, we could and we, deal if, we had the, if we had the, we would have to pay, uh, provide the pumping stations or the, mm -hmm. the no. tube. All we have to say is this is, we'd like we to have that. We apply to West Dakota Water that they want thousand acre feet of water to use for a municipal plant. So we could apply to change that 1,000 acres from our 10,000 to them. Then they would come up with money and plans and study to get the water out there and into their pipes. And that's for the five year. And I'm, I guess I'm not I don't see uh, where benefit for West Dakota to pay for an engineering uh, mm -hmm. because whoever uses it's going to have to be there on the engineering impact study because just to do a regular uh, engineer, who knows where, what they're going to run across to get it to the point. Plus, Oklahoma Sioux Water has already got one, and I think it's going already to Hot Springs. I think it's coming back up to Custer, plus the West River water is out there with my filling and stuff. And so there's already, obviously, a lot of engineering that's already out there available that they, it's in use, so why pay to have it done again? So, so you, from your perspective, there's already a plan in place to get water from Lake Oahe to Pennington County to West River right now under this permit. No, no not like this permit. I'm just saying there are other entities that have used their permits to get water into western South Dakota. Mm -hmm. And so uh, 
why would coming to Western County, Western Pennington County, be any different than those permits to get it this far? Especially the one that goes through Old Wallace that's already in Hot Springs and up to Custer. Well, well, that one is the uh, Southern Hills. Yeah, but the water's still coming. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure it is. I think, I thought they drilled a couple of Madison wells down there. Yeah, the mini Waconi goes from the Shire that River does, all the way yeah. up to uh, Kadoka. In fact, if yeah, you drive yeah. down the highway, you see the big sign on the water tower. Yeah. And they pumped in. But I don't think it comes all the way to Hot Springs, mm -hmm. like he says. Mm -hmm. That's it what may I not sound good, but I thought when I saw the funding. What's that? Summer Hills. This is mostly wells. Yeah, the Old Alasu water system does come from many times you this way. Right. This is a DNR managed um, outreach. I mean, DNR, DNR is the source of information on where the water. Yes. Versus yep. starting to end. They're the ones, yeah, that issue the permits and change them around. I'm thinking that it would be beneficial if you did a study on that and come back with the answers. Collect some more information on what's out here. And if it's possible Milwaukee. and where it's out and where it's coming from, and just have a, a real proposal for it with all the information that we need. Another Joanne? Uh, Joanne Noyes, uh, South Dakota DNR. Um, you could also use rural water, South Dakota rural water, besides DNR, because rural water is the one that helps these entities with their rural water systems that brings those waters through their pipeline. So they may have the studies themselves, or they may have you know somebody that have done those. That's just another resource, is what I'm saying. They may have tracking of some of those. Well, they product. they go and help the people that use these, the operators of these systems, so they know who's using the waters in these pipelines and um, how they operate and what kind of treatment they have to do. And, Stuff like that. And they do the engineering. And I or believe they, the systems I, they might, yeah. Yeah. I wonder if you could ask for a, for him to come for someone from there to address us on this. Instead of just going around, and we really don't have any real answers today, but we have a lot of questions. We need, my, I guess what I'm getting at is, I would very much, instead of going in circles, find somebody who, I'll get, get our heads together and get someone who can ask certain questions come to our meeting. A summary and presentation? Very good, thank you. Chairman? Sure. Sorry. <laughs> I was just going to comment that there may very well be more than one solution. Yeah, pipelines is, is the traditional approach, but there might be other approaches, and those other approaches might be more cost effective and better. So let's investigate. Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's get some information. I think this would be a good use of, of the funds that we have, because this would benefit everybody, potentially. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Leon, I do have a question for you. Do you say that any of this water by use of permit has to be used inside our water district? Or can we sell no, it to I did not entity? say that. Okay, so we can even sell it to an entity outside our district if somebody in Pier needed water along the way as well. Uh, as long as they meet, that's where you get down into the codified laws, which is the second page. As long as they're a state institution, facility, agency, municipality, conservancy district, water development district, whatever, as long as they meet all that rules and stuff, we can transfer part of that permit to them or transfer the whole thing. Done on an annual basis. We can't lease them the right to the water. Just, just the but if you built your own pipeline here, you could lease them the water. Or grant somebody a permit in the pier area for a thousand acres a year or so. 
the two big series thing. Dan Richard Citizen, can I make a suggestion? Uh, why don't you vote to have the chairman sign this letter, get it over to them, and then you can work out all the details of all your studies and everything else you want to do, but at least the state has it on file that you want that 10,000 acre feet. I don't know. So it's just this is just understanding what we have available to us. It's just not the So can we have someone can we get it together to get our questions answered? Is does DNR have a resource to start with to give us a summary of what's coming on here from Hawaii that we would know? Yeah, this information is from DNR. That's yeah. their head guy. Eric Grunge. You can Eric, have Eric, Eric come out. Got, they have all the water rights <laughs> on record into the state issue. They have a whole list. Of them. And uh, what this permit does, it, it reserves water. If we have a project out here, for example, somebody, a big water user needs water out somewhere in Bangor County. We, they came to us. We could we could uh, use part of this water or all or whatever to uh, supply water to that uh, entry. And uh, I don't know about uh, you know, some of the details you're talking about, but that's basically what it does. It's a producer use of uh, the water in the life. Yeah, I think it's better for somebody for rural water situation. They're integrating. I'd say get both. Then you'd have yeah. them both here. And when Eric would come out, he could explain exactly what, in detail, right. what the future use permit. That's his explanation right there, word for word. That's what he said. He said, this is the way I explain yeah, it. And I understand it, but uh, you got to have a use, you have to have a beneficial use for it before you apply to actually use some of that water. You know? Whether it's a rural water, rural water system, or a very or you know, in Bangor County, for example, Use part of that water. That's a lot of water. Yeah. It's my understanding that the two firms in New York, that that's all they do, all the United States is sell this water. And they have all the paperwork, it's all for a fee, but it's publicly, there's companies that do that. You get a hold of them and they handle it all. Pretty profitable business right now. Yeah. City of Rapid City has a future use permission for water. Whatever we do, you have to hire the right people to go up for them. Yeah, you're talking about utilizing it. Right, you like they, they they utilize yeah, they know all the tricks and all that stuff and they just hang out with references on that one. Jeanette? Can we stand on this right now? Where are we at? Well I think I can ask to see if, if, if either Emily or Leon would initiate a request to both of those uh, entities. Yeah, I make that we're welcome to make it what you'd like regarding saying a presentation from those two entities. I don't want to repeat All right. I would like to do that. Okay. I know what you're Now you just tell me the two entities. South Carolina, South Carolina, Rural Water, and DDMR. Water, 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 Well, read back my motion. I don't know. <laughs> okay, I make a motion that the two entities, South Dakota Rural Water, South Dakota Rural Water, and the water, 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 water rights, water rights, be contacted. What I'm trying to say is to be contacted or invited to our meeting. Can you work that better than that? So. To present information on what we are talking about. <laughs> I'm not going to this at all. What are you saying? What are you saying? 
putting it into beneficial use. And putting it to beneficial use. There you go, right there. I'll take credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> you can have it. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, we've got to clarify the motion first, please. Okay. We're going to read the motion back and we'll say anticipate the need for a second. Uh, move by Bureau to invite South Dakota Rural Water and DNR Water Rights to present information about West Dakota Water Development Special Use Permit and ways to put it to beneficial use. Yeah. One clarification to set a special use money future use for the future use. That's the correct term. Okay. So, where's the motion out on the floor? I'll second. Okay, Dan second. I don't think you might. Like. <coughs> no discussion. Okay. If there is any. Move to the vote. All those in favor of this presentation of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. 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 We have this meeting on a monthly basis, <clears throat> and uh, the other thing I would like to point out on that discussion about should you spend money on projects you shouldn't or whatever is last year several well thought out, hard worked on projects were brought before this board and. Uh, the board turned down. Uh, and I think maybe you should go back through your minutes and see if you can justify why you did what you did. Because uh, I know for a fact two of them were very well thought out. Maybe not well presented. Maybe you should have sent, sent the guy back to bring up a better presentation. Don't know, but it was a very well thought out and the other uh, one, and then was was uh, was uh, very well thought out. And I thought it was presented well, uh, and it would have helped people. And, and I'm going to tell you, one of them projects was mine, and I'll tell you the result of that project. We're turning it down. <clears throat> the uh, guy that owns the water has now jacked up the rates. He's going to put in. Uh, more septic systems in this place that can't take any more septic systems, all blessed by the county. Um, all based on the fact that we couldn't uh, come to the fact of giving them a little money to get uh, over the hump for a million dollar project. It's all about and, uh, money. That's, so now they're uh, sitting there uh, Water jacked up, and uh, guys going to put a meter on uh, how much water they're using after a certain time because they think people are cheating, and uh, you know it's just got nothing to hurt. Now their mistake—they should have never bought the place without water. It's simple as that. But that's near here or there. The other thing uh, I'd like to point out is. Uh, H2E has done a, a wonderful job. Somebody made a statement about uh, conflict interest. I was on the board when they were hired. I wasn't on. I wasn't on board with the hiring. I think I was the only no vote on it. <clears throat> but I've come to change that. And the the board hired H2E because they were the experts on testing water. Uh, going through EPA on stuff, everything. So yeah, we when we voted the second time 
to bring them on board, it was with the full knowledge that we were going to use them for other projects that we were concerned with, particularly DNA testing that's not being done anywhere else in this county that I know of. Point. Quit telling me there's bugs in the water. Tell me what the bugs are. And that's that's what all this DNA testing is all about. So, and I, now I'm not going to say I'll just shut up. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else from the public? Very well. I think that last motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. You're in favor? Thank <laughs> you.